Good morning and Easter greetings for this Easter season. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, Christ is risen and we are Easter people. That means that we get to live a different way because we know the, li- the risen Christ. And I pray that as we go through this Easter season and, and li- listen to the sermons on the resurrection, resurrected life, that we are learning a little bit about what being Easter people is. Now, I want to make sure that I'm saying this right, but we are people who appreciate our musicians. Is that right? So give us a plot. We've had um, Craig give us a concert with a newly refurbished organ in the sanctuary. We've had Tim here um, giving us beautiful music all throughout the COVID season, the whole last year, and um, giving us something to, to look forward to. Thank you. We also very much love Daniel. And, and I want you to know that um, for now, Daniel has um, given us notice that he can't do services for us for a while. Now, I pray that that's a temporary thing. Um, but that is the, the situation. And the SPRC, the Staff Parish Relations Committee, encourages you. If you've been blessed by Daniel and in, in his ministry here, send him a note. Tell him how much he's loved here. Uh, let him know, and, um, and we'll be just lifting his spirits and holding him in prayer throughout this time that he's taking off. So, so there's that. There's one other thing that you need to know is one of the reasons that we're not in the sanctuary right now is that tomorrow scaffolding goes up um, and we are going to repair all of the damage that happened during that really windy rainstorm um, and um, some previous damage too so you'll see um, if you ended up coming in here be careful there's going to be a lot of scaffolding and painting and things going on between the 12th and the 30th and so Will you ready yourself for the Spirit of God? As we approach God and we connect with one another, we will be here together. Let's be called to worship by Sandy. Last Sunday was Easter. Really? A day on which the only fitting call to worship was an announcement of the event. The resurrection, the greatest act of life-saving imaginable. Through it... God let us laugh at our death sentence by punctuating it with a living exclamation point. On this day and in days to come, may we remember that there are times when God resonates, restates the joyful resurrection proclamation. Times like when abilities faded and forgotten are channeled toward new creativity. That's resurrection. Friendships once killed by frosty misunderstanding, bloom again in warm reconciliation. That's resurrection. Hopes, glimmering and gone, are rekindled by expressions of caring. That's resurrection. And faith, dulled by lack of exercise, dances again to God's everyday rhythms. That's resurrection too. Welcome to resurrection. Amen. We are going to celebrate resurrection in a lot of ways. And one of them is during the prayers for the people, we're going to do blessing of the backpacks, of the students, of the parents, of the teachers, and of anybody else who is going to school in the next weeks to come. We're used to standing when the hymn happens. And, um, and some of us are used to singing when the hymn happens. Um, Tim and I will relieve you of the singing part. But if we could stand, we're going to sing, uh, Are We Yet Alive? Please stand. Oh, God. 
please be seated. And we'll hear the scripture. The scripture today is from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors, because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wound left by the nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them this time. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that, believing, you will have life in his name. God's word for the people of God. Thank you for that reading, Sandy. And how about we just take a moment to pray. God, as the scripture that has been with us for thousands of years fills this room, allow it to help us to open our hearts, that we would allow your spirit to fill our hearts. Allow it to help us to open our lives, that we would let the breath of God come and be released upon us. Allow us all to to feel the presence of God in our lives that we might believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, unless I see, I'd like us to spend this time during the sermon just trying on those words for ourselves. Does that fit me? Unless I see. Does that fit the, just the disciple Thomas? Unless I see, or does it fit all of the disciples, or maybe millions of people since that day? You know, even though time passes and we learn from our experiences, fear remains powerful in the lives of disciples. And that's disciples the day after Jesus was crucified and disciples today as well. We know this because it was Easter evening when this story happened. Um, they had already heard some news. They had, they had already gone out to the tomb. But it was Easter evening and the doors were locked. And John says they were locked for fear. These doors, um, just imagine the scene. It was three days ago, Jesus, who you'd been following for years, maybe three years, is crucified. It was the religious authorities that whipped up the crowd. A crowd that was singing Hosanna a week earlier is now the whole crowd cheering, crucify him, crucify him. Those religious authorities are still on the other side of the door. That crowd is still on the other side of the door because they were here for the Passover weekend. Then it was the Romans that had nailed him to a cross and made sure, absolutely sure that he died. And those Romans were still on the other side of the door. The the disciples were afraid. Even the stoutest among the disciples were afraid. And remember Peter, who said, I would never deny you no matter what. When it came down to the fact that that crowd and those religious authorities and those Romans were all around saying, weren't you with him? 
he said, I don't even know what you're talking about. Who is this person, Jesus? Now, everyone in Jerusalem knew who Jesus was. They were all shouting, crucify him. So there's no way they're believing this guy saying he's not even heard of the man. So these afraid disciples, imagine being in that upper room with the door, not just locked, but maybe some furniture pushed up against it. Um, the window, um, I don't know what, how that window opening looked, but whatever covered it was covering it. If you had candles on, you didn't want anyone seeing the light coming through. If you had a crowd in this upper room, people were living downstairs. So you were walking softly and whispering in the room because you didn't want people to recognize that there's this big group up there. So who do you think's up there? Thomas wasn't there. Judas wasn't there. So does that just leave 10? That's not a very crowded room. But I think in the Gospel of John, we get a little broader sense of what disciples are. Actually, John never talks about the 12 all by themselves. John is very concerned with a much larger group of people. And when you consider the fact that Jesus sent his disciples out to heal in his name, consider that he didn't send five groups of two by two or six groups of two by two. He sent 35 groups of two by two. So there were disciples that weren't just the 12. And that would probably be how Mary Magdalene knew the way to run back to Peter and to the disciple that Jesus loved to make sure that they heard that the tomb was empty. You know, if the women were there, I can imagine Mary just taking it personally that people had the doors locked because she had seen the risen Lord. She had been actually to this place in this garden where the risen Lord had said her name. And then she looked up and recognized him and called him teacher. And then she wanted to embrace him and hold him. But he pushed her back and said, do not hold on to me. But her heart had changed in that moment. And she ran back to get Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved. And they ran in to see what was going on. And they didn't see anything. Okay. So, so there they were. They were all back in this room. And she must have been going up to disciples one at a time going, you know, I saw him. He was alive. Jesus is alive. And getting nowhere. Because Peter was there too. And that disciple that, that Jesus loved was there. We don't know who that was. I think his name was George. <laughs> no? no it, it was Dave, apparently. Okay. And, um, and so we don't know who that was. But they, they were there, and when they had run to the tomb, they left not running at all. Because when they got there, they saw nothing. They were not witnesses to the resurrected Lord. They were witnesses to an empty tomb. And now they sit comforted by nothing in this upper room, afraid of everything and hoping, just hoping that these locked doors would save them. Well, they didn't because Jesus just came in. And, and that's what John says. It, does, it says the doors were locked and Jesus came. Now, he saw the fear right away. Um, and I think he would too. Um, because a room full of people with locked doors, all of a sudden seeing somebody there that appeared through the locked doors, they were afraid. So the first thing he says is, peace be with you. Now, I don't think that worked. Would it work here? So, so he did more than that. He said, look at my hands. Look at the nail marks. Look at my side. And they started to recognize him. So he said again, peace be with you. That was when their hearts started to change a little bit. Then, then he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. I really like this part because it's a Pentecost moment to me. And, um, and it's not like the Luke version of the Pentecost in Acts where the tongues of fire came out and a, a mighty wind was available. It's quieter. It's personal. He breathed on them. 
a gentle sort of Pentecost, but no less powerful. Just think of what the scene was described in the scripture. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you were there, would that bring you hope? Would that take the fear down a few notches? They were given both peace, the peace of Christ, and power. The power to do what Jesus was doing in this world. A calling. And they were supposed to be empowered by the resurrected Lord. But they were still behind locked doors. They were called out to fulfill the duties of witnessing of a risen Christ. And what happened? Fear persisted. Unless I see, but they saw. I think it's worth noting that when Thomas came back, the doors were still locked. It said in the scripture, after eight days, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. And even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. And he said, because he had to, peace be with you. Those words, unless I see, did they apply to visual seeing? Because all the disciples but Thomas had seen, and the doors were still locked. We talk about doubting Thomas, but, but I wonder if he was just one among many doubting in the room. Because when fear has a greater hold on us than the hope of Christ, who's doubting? Does fear have a greater hold on us than the hope of Christ? Seeing with your eyes doesn't always lead to seeing by faith. And I think that is what we hear in Thomas's story. Because Jesus comes up to Thomas and says, feel my hands, touch my side. And Thomas doesn't just get the blessing, but he says to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Nobody had said that up to this point. So the first time he gets to see, he doesn't just see with his eyes. He sees with his faith. He calls Jesus Lord. Remember at the end of the scripture, it said that Jesus had done many miraculous things in front of the disciples, but this one, and they weren't recorded, but this one was so that you would believe. Because by seeing by faith means believing in Jesus Christ, God's Son. And this believing gives us life in the name of our Lord. Life that we begin living as soon as we begin believing. Life that, that starts with the unless I see. But it's not necessarily unless I see with my eyes, but unless I see with my spirit that Jesus is the Christ, God's son, my life will not be full. My fear will, will be held in place and never be overcome by the hope we have in Christ. This week, my daughter Emerson Grace called and she had had what felt like a crisis in her life. Because she's trying to get into a graduate school, she had to take the GRE, which is a test that gets you into graduate school. And it required that she print something out. And people under the age of 25 don't own printers. <laughs> so, so that's just kind of odd for them. And, um, and she didn't own a printer. And she went to the library, but the library was closed. And, and it turned out that, you know, with two hours of preparation, she wasn't able to do what she wanted to do. And she was really upset. At one point, she says to me, Dad, I think God is just trying to make sure that I want it. Make me prove that I want it. And... Maybe we feel that way sometimes. Maybe we feel like the obstacles that are in our path are to prove 
that we are going to be good disciples or to prove that we're going to put our faith in God. But my response to her took it a different angle. I said, obstacles, God's not in the business of obstacles. We do obstacles just fine. We put plenty of obstacles in the life that we live all over the place. And what God has done when God breathes on you and gives you the peace of Christ, what God has done is prepare you to get past it. Prepare you to go beyond the locked doors. Prepare you to let the fear lie down and your faith in Christ rise up. This is what God's in the business of doing. God is making a path from where you're at to a glorious future so that you might have life in the name of the Lord. God is making sure that our believing matters to our circumstances, not that our circumstances are brought, down, brought about to prove our believing. How do you feel about that? Is that an amen? amen? This is God who comes in that moment to make sure we see, not just with our eyes, but see with our spirits. Will you pray with me? God, I, I thank you for the ways that you put in our life. The way beyond this barrier, the way beyond this crisis, the way beyond COVID, the way beyond schools being closed, the way beyond our isolation and the way beyond all of the things that are buckling our systems of economy and, and personal growth. God, show us that way, but help us, God, that we would believe. To the, today, in this sanctuary, bring the peace of Christ to each one of us. That we might recognize that you are Christ, the Son of God. And that we will have doubt no more, but believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's the times of communion, and I hope you got a communion um, little container. Um, if you haven't got a communion container, could you raise your hand and someone will just bring you one. Um, there's, there's a person, there's just a couple of you out there. Um, the, tab, the tab is what opens it, but don't open it yet. Let us uh, hear the blessing, um, and then we'll open it after that. Because when Jesus came as the resurrected Lord in the presence of disciples, he often ate. It was always so that you might believe, but it was not just so that you might believe. It was also so that you would remember that supper, that last supper, when Jesus was about to be betrayed. In that last supper, he would bless the bread. And so let's ask God's blessing on this bread. He would break the bread and give it to his disciples and say, this is my body, broken for you. As often as you get together, eat and remember me. You know, that remembering was important because Jesus that day had washed their feet, had served them and said, you too will be servants. He wanted that remembering to be something that was about your ministry and about your connection with God. So when the supper was over, he lifted the cup and blessed it. So let's ask God's blessing on the cup. It says, this is the cup of forgiveness. The cup of righteousness that's poured out for you and for many. And as often as you get together, drink and remember. Remembering God's relationship with us. Remembering God reaches us is such such an important thing. So let's peel this off. You just slowly peel the top off. And when you get about halfway there, it, the plastic on top should be a little wrinkled and you can um, get that wafer out. Um, but at least 10% of the time it doesn't work. So, um, so if you have one of those situations, get creative. I have one of those situations. So, I got it, I got it. And as I tried to do it, it broke 
conveniently, because the body of Christ was broken just for me. See? And so, so let's all take this together. The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of love poured out for you. I believe we're at prayers of the people. And um, these prayers, we're going to um, have someone, uh, let's see, who's got a loud voice? Kelly, would you do this? Okay. Okay. You're going to take this, you're going to take this microphone. Yes. <laughs> Kelly's a happy volunteer. And so he's going to take the microphone. He's the only person that's going to speak into the microphone. And when you have a prayer, you raise your hand and he will come over to you, you tell him the prayer, and he'll say it into the microphone so that we all hear it. We'll also have ribbons being tied, and we have um, children, parents, teachers, and so forth, all coming up. So let's do that first. We're gonna bless the backpacks first. So in little family groups, would you bring your backpack, your child, or your parent, or your teacher, and be right, right here, I know you guys are ready. Anybody else going to school? Okay, right over there. Let's get you right over here, Sam, with your family. Now, as long as we can put a dolphin between each family, we're in good shape. Okay? Yes. Okay. There we go. Perfect. So these are our families that are going to school today. Will you give them a hand? Jacob, you have backpacks? Come right over here, Jacob. You put your backpacks right there. And you stand with me. Okay, so I want everybody to um, say these words. Jesus is with me. Now, I'm going to ask you questions, and that's the answer. Jesus is with me, okay? So when I'm getting ready for school, Jesus is with me. When I am going to bed on time, Jesus. when I'm not going to bed on time, <laughs> yeah. when, when I'm doing my homework, Jesus. and when I'm not doing my homework, Jesus. yeah, and when I am being nice to my friends and teachers, Jesus. and when that isn't something I want to do today, Jesus. yes. When I'm scared of, the, of being in, in school for the first time in a long time. Jesus. And when my friends are scared. Jesus. And so because of Jesus being with us the, this whole time, just let your backpack, your briefcase, your, um, whatever's in your pocket, your phone, um, <laughs> remind you that you are one person that Jesus cherishes. So let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you for Jacob, and I thank you for all of these family members, and all these parents, and all these teachers that have been so patient. God, I thank you for your presence in their lives it, during the time of COVID, and now as we try to resurrect out of it as a society, as a church, as, as a country. God, help us to recognize you every place we are. Help us to see you in the person right across from us. Help us to see you in a friend and see you in a stranger. Help us to recognize that we're not on this path alone, even when it's hard. For all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jacob. And what? There is special music coming, but that will be right after we do some more prayers. So go on, everybody back in there. Who's got a prayer that they'd like to pray? Thank you, Jacob. Okay, so I know that, um, that Deanna's sister passed away, um, and I talked to her yesterday. Her sister's name is Sharon, and we're going to pray for her. And I talked to Kathy Hayward yesterday, and her sister is in hospice and, um, from memory care. So let's pray for the sisters that are ill or, or have passed. God, I thank you for the, the siblings you put in our lives. 
for the great memories that we have of, of playing together or even fighting together. But being together has been a, such an important part of who we are. So God, as Sharon is being remembered, as Yvonne is being cared for, I just ask that your presence be felt. Felt in the overcoming of grief and felt in the times where, where, where fear is welling up. And for this we pray saying, joyfully we stand in your light. Any other prayers? Then let's have some special music to enjoy this by. And then we'll say the Lord's Prayer and do a little humming afterwards. Oh, oh. 
Amen. And so now, will you stand with me and say the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if you can remain standing just to hymn one verse, just hum one verse of the hymn, Amazing Grace. <laughs> Humming isn't that bad a thing in church because I feel it more in my body and it uh, makes my lips tingle. So it reminds me a bit that God is with us. So I want you to know that um, our offerings don't happen the way they have happened. That, um, that they typically, we would pass a tray during a church and we would pray over the offering and then stand up and sing the doxology. Well, most of you have sent it in the mail. Or you have um, clicked on the, on the internet page and donated online. But we do have some trays back here that you can do on your way out if you are a traditionalist and you want to put your money in the tray. It's right there. But I'd like to pray about the offerings that we get this week. And then I'll ask you to stand and I'll just sing the doxology to you a cappella. So, God, you have been so generous in our lives. You have been the God that presents us with peace and, and empowers us to do the mission you have it for us in this world. So God, help us to give all of ourselves and these gifts and these tithes and these offerings that they might do that will, that they might be put to work by the power of your spirit. For all of this, we pray saying, amen. And now let's stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise, no, no, no. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power of lives. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Receive this benediction. You are God's chosen people. And God gives you peace in this time. That's so scary. And God gives you power by the power of the Holy Spirit. But only you can unlock the door. So do so. And go into this world as Easter people. Amen? Amen? Amen. You can be seated. I don't want anybody rushing out the door because we, we came in slowly. Let's go out slowly and not crowd each other. Um, it was beautiful to see you today. God bless. Amen. Amen.